welcome to your biocast. I'm Mrs. Jager and I'll be your guide. As always, take detailed notes and don't forget to bring them to class the next day. Take some time right now to get your binder together, a pen, and get ready to learn more about biology. Okay, today we're going to get you ready for your earthworm dissections, which will happen during our next class. What's expected from you during this biocast is for you to take notes on um, the organs that you're going to need to locate, on any safety concerns, and any materials that you're going to need. Uh, the earthworms that we're going to dissect are, um, the genus is Lumbricus and the species is Terrestris. The kingdom is Animalia and the phylum is Annelidia. So you're going to want to write down Lumbricus terrestris. That is the scientific name for the earthworm that we will be dissecting tomorrow or during your next class. Okay, you should be able to identify the following um, uh, structures within the worm. Segments, septum, setae, the pharynx, the esophagus, the crop, the gizzard, the intestines, the aortic arches, which are essentially the heart, the ventral nerve cord, the dorsal blood vessel, the clitellum, and the male or female genital pore. Um, all of those are structures that you'll need to be able to identify, so you'll want to write those down now. Pause if you need to. Okay, you will be using the following tools, a scalpel, probes, dissecting pins, and a rubber padded dissection tray. Um, if you don't get those copied down now, that's okay because we're going to go through those in detail. Some safety concerns you need to be aware of. Scalpels are sharp. Be careful. Um, if you get a cut, make sure you notify your instructor immediately. Um, the chemical used to preserve the earthworms is not toxic to you, but it must not be ingested. So do not touch your face or mouth while dissecting. You will have access to gloves and, um, and to goggles to wear during dissections. Okay, the first instrument you'll be using is a scalpel. Um, again, they're very sharp. You want, this is the sharp end, obviously. Uh, it has a handle. You want to hold it by the handle and treat them with care. Uh, you don't want to push too hard when you're uh, slicing open the worm. You want to cut very gently. In the past, I've seen students kind of butcher the worm uh, because they push too hard. So cut very gently at first. A probe is another instrument you'll be using. It has a blunt end that you're going to use to point out the different uh, structures that you locate on the worm during your uh, verbal quiz that you'll take with me during the lab. Dissecting pins are used to pin back the skin around on the worm and to give you an, an area to view uh, the internal uh, air part of the worm. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Dissecting pan is necessary. Your worm should not be out of the pan. It will stretch just about the entire length of the pan. When you get your pan, you will cover it with a paper towel and you'll place all of your dissecting materials and worm inside of it. And this is your workspace that you'll work within during the dissections. Okay, when you get started, uh, when you get your worm, the first thing that you're going to want to do is um, you're going to lay it in the, in the pan with the light colored side facing up. Note, see, notice the light side. Uh, you're going to pin right at the front of the, where the mouth is. You'll notice there's uh, an opening on one end. Uh, there's actually an opening on both ends, but you're going to pin the mouth, and I'll show you how to distinguish those in a minute. Um, you want to make sure you don't pin through the mouth. You just want to pin near it. You'll notice that farther back on the worm, you'll see a genital pore. That's what it looks like. You'll need to be able to identify those uh, that tomorrow. The clitellum is um, a band of tissue located about midway through the worm. Uh, you're going to need to be able to identify that and describe what it does. 
your lab will help explain what exactly the function of the cotelum is. Okay, notice when you're pinning your worm, you want to pin it right at the tip of where the mouth is. Uh, the mouth is located closest to the clitellum, and then you're going to pin it at its midpoint, somewhere around here, and then you'll pin it further back. Okay, once you've had, once you've pinned your worm down, again, you're going to pin on one end. You're going to pin in the middle, and you'll probably want to, you'll want to pin the um, the posterior end, which is the the end where the anus is located. You'll pin that end also. Um, you're going to start your incision two centimeters behind the clitellum. So what that means is you're going to start your incision um, right here. This is the clitellum, okay? So you're going to start it right at the clitellum, and you're going to continue it all the way down the length of the worm. Some students find it necessary to go all the way down. Some students stop right here. Um, either way is fine. You will need to, to cut all the way down at some point to open it up. Make sure you don't cut too deeply. Again, you just want to cut through the skin. You want to cut it as though you were cutting through um, the skin of a hot dog. That's a, about the consistency of it. Okay, as you cut, you're going to want to begin to separate the skin using pins. Notice that you want to pin through the skin, not through any of the internal organs. You want to position your pins facing away from the worm so that uh, you have room to see uh, the inside of the worm. You don't want to be straight up and down from the worm. You want to actually face the heads of the pin away from the worm, so come in at an angle. As you go, you can pin the skin back and again angle them out of the way. And you're using your scalpel, which is located on the left of the screen. Okay, you will need to take your, your probe, and rem remember that was the object with the blunt end, and you're going to want to break the, these uh, pieces of skin called partitions away between the segments. Um, these are called the septum. Okay, that those uh, pieces of skin are called the septum, and you need to separate those in order to see your internal structures. Again, take note of about the number of pins. You want to pin like every inch, um, not, not uh, more than that because they'll tear, and using too many pins is unnecessary, so about every inch. The aortic arches are found um, near the mouth of the worm and you're going to need to be very careful when you're cutting the end. You don't want to cut too deeply. You want to move very slowly up towards the top. So these are the aortic arches. They look like um, little black worms. There should be five pairs, so ten in total. These are simple hearts. So they have um, basically ten hearts, you could say, ten aortic arches. Uh, notice where the pharynx is located also up here. You will need to find that. The dorsal blood vessel runs from the heart all the way down the body, so you will need to identify that at some point as well in your lab. And again, we've got the dorsal blood vessel running. You've got um, the pharynx located here, uh, and you've got, this is called the crop, and you've got the gizzard here, and we'll go over what the functions of those organs are during class. Okay, the ventral nerve cord is this white stringy line that runs parallel to the, um, the dorsal blood vessel. So you'll notice, see that thread-like structure there? That is the nerve cord. Worms do not have complex nerve systems. It's one of the reasons why we choose to use them for dissections. Um, they don't have a complex nerve system, so they just really have this nerve cord, and that's about the extent of their nervous system. The brain, if you are lucky, you may find the brain. To find the brain, you'll have to remove the pharynx. It is a challenge organ. If you find it, you get extra credit. Um, hopefully, you have learned a little bit about what you're supposed to do for your dissections, and you're ready to go for your lab on the next day that we meet. Make sure you have that list of organs that you'll need to find. Uh, if you need to go back and watch the video again, you can. Um, you're all going to do great, and I will see you in class the next time we meet. This will be the end of our biocast today.